For a bird looking for a safe sanctuary to rear its young, Phillip Island seems as though it would be the perfect option. This small, remote island located in the southwest Pacific is devoid of the predatory mammals that many birds have to face. But evolution ensures that no ecological niche is left vacant for long. And the role of the mammalian predators has instead been occupied by a very unlikely creature. A giant centipede. Now I am quite sure that giant centipedes are not a foreign concept to people who watch this channel. After all, the name of this channel was Lair of Centipedes up until very recently. That being said, exactly what type of centipede these Phillip Island giants are could come as even more of a shock than their surprisingly high place in the food chain. When one thinks of big centipedes, usually they'll think about the genus Scolopendra or maybe Ethmostigmus. One genus that certainly does not come to mind is Cormocephalus. And you guessed it, that is exactly what these centipedes are. The genus Cormocephalus is one with which I am very familiar, as representatives of the genus are widespread and common across much of Australia. Shown here is a fine example of a Cormocephalus westward eye that I encountered on a trip up Mount Mitchell in the scenic rim. The Cormocephalus of mainland Australia are generally modestly sized centipedes and are quite inoffensive, with a mild venom and a passive disposition, being quite reluctant to bite. This is by and large the norm for Cormocephalus species. But islands have a tendency to cook up biological anomalies, and the Cormocephalus on Phillip Island are far larger and more formidable than any of their relatives on the Australian mainland. The name of the giant Cormocephalus that inhabit Phillip Island is Cormocephalus koinai, and apart from nearby Nepean Island, it is found nowhere else in the world. With a maximum recorded body length of a little over 23 centimetres, Cormocephalus koinai easily rivals many of the Scolopendra and Ethmostigmus species in size. And every bit as astonishing as their size is their diet. When I alluded to these centipedes being a threat to hatchling birds towards the beginning of this video, I was not exaggerating. Phillip Island is known to support breeding populations of 13 seabird species, the most abundant of which is Pterodroma nigripennis, the black-winged petrel. And it turns out the local centipedes are a major predator of their nestling chicks. In addition to several centipedes being caught in the act of consuming petrel chicks, Numerous deceased nestlings were found with telltale signs of predation by these myriapods. Because the centipedes consistently attacked their prey on the hind neck, any injuries to that region found on a deceased chick could be safely assumed to be the work of a centipede. With the centipedes being ascertained as predators of the local avians, a natural next step would be to try and investigate how much of the centipede's diet these birds comprise. Estimates of the centipede's dietary components attained using a Bayesian dietary source model suggested that the seabird nestlings comprised approximately 7.9% of the centipede's diets, with a 95% confidence interval being between 1.6 and 16.9%, which essentially means that we can be 95% sure that the true proportion of the centipede's diet that the birds make up lies between 1.6 and 16.9%. However, vertebrates as a whole made up a much more substantial proportion of the centipede's diet, with vertebrates being estimated to form just under half of their overall diet. Predominantly geckos and skinks, which made up 17.7% and 12.8% of the centipede's estimated diets, respectively. 
But there is more to giant bird-eating centipedes than just a scary headline. And it is thought that Cormocephalus coini may play a vital role in Phillip Island's ecology. Seabird nestlings are fed and raised exclusively on marine prey items such as fish and squid. And predation upon the birds by centipedes establishes these marine-derived nutrients in the island's terrestrial ecosystem. Meaning, in short, that the centipedes are a critical link in the island's nutrient cycle. Most often, nutrient deposition in seabird colonies is quite patchy, as it tends to be somewhat restricted and localised within close proximity to nesting sites. Predation upon the nestling chicks by centipedes, which are generally quite active and mobile animals, helps to distribute the nutrients around the island more, thus likely creating a more homogeneous, in other words, uniform nutrient landscape. Centipedes that routinely prey on birds and lizards may come as a bit of a surprise to some people. But large centipedes are no strangers whatsoever to preying on vertebrates. Among terrestrial arthropods, centipedes along with tarantulas are perhaps the best equipped to tackle and subdue vertebrates. Their often potent venom accompanied by their large size and brute strength means that they can prey on animals who are well off limits for most other predatory arthropods and it should therefore come as little shock that vertebrates falling prey to centipedes is a phenomenon that has been witnessed the world over. Lizards, it seems, are a particularly common prey item. This individual was subdued by a specimen of Australia's largest centipede, Ethmostigmus rubripes. Snakes, too, can be overpowered by centipedes, such as this Sibonophis triangularis, which has fallen victim to Scolopendra dawidophi. And then of course there are the South American behemoths like Scolopendra gigantea. In what is perhaps the best known instance of centipedes preying on vertebrates, thanks partially to the publicity it gained from being featured in David Attenborough's Life in the Undergrowth, Scolopendra gigantea has been observed hunting bats. Ascending to a cave ceiling and reaching out into their flight path, seizing the first bat that comes within reach. This titan of the centipedes comes equipped with truly tremendous muscular strength, allowing it to outgrapple and subdue an enormous variety of prey items that most other centipedes could only dream of taking down. The topic of this video also reminds me of something else that I feel is worth bringing up. Unsurprisingly, the research concerning Cormocephalus coini preying on seabirds was publicised by a variety of science-related news sites. And judging by some of the comments posted, many people seem to be utterly appalled that something like this could happen. Baby birds, they're cute, they're so fluffy. And centipedes, well, I think they're cute, but I am perfectly willing to acknowledge that I am very much in the minority there. Of course, the issue with that is, in addition to cuteness being an entirely subjective thing, nature has no concept of it whatsoever. The food chain doesn't care which animals give you a warm and fuzzy feeling inside. It doesn't care which ones are capable of showing you affection and which ones cannot. And while it can be great to pretend that all of the invasive pest species are ugly, creepy animals, and all of the cute, fluffy things could do no wrong in this world, that very often is not the case. Many so-called creepy crawlies have vital, indispensable roles in ecological systems. And likewise, some of the most destructive invasive species on this planet are cute, fluffy cats and rabbits. So what am I getting at? Well, in essence, we need to let go of the idea that some animals are more deserving of a life on this planet than others, simply because we may feel more partial to their appearance or other characteristics. 
We are just a single species of ape that has existed for a geological blink of an eye. Mother Nature owes us absolutely nothing. And with that rant over, I think it is a good place to end this video. I hope you found the information I shared as fascinating as I did, and if you want to learn more detail, then the original study is linked in the description for you to check out. If you enjoy my content, then feel free to check out some of my other uploads, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. So thank you all very much for watching, that is it from me and I'll see you again very soon.